Hey everyone, it's Aries JJ back with you. Today we're going to be continuing on with the build tutorial series. Now, if you haven't watched my last two videos, the Clapton and the Fuse Clapton, I recommend that you uh, go back and take a look at those, unless you're already extremely familiar with those techniques. Uh, today we're going to be continuing on and doing the Staggered Fuse Clapton. Now, for those of you that aren't familiar with what a Staggered Fuse Clapton is, Basically what you're doing is you're taking two individual cores and clapping them and leaving a precise gap between your wrap wires. Uh, and then you'll take those two cores and uh, fuse them together uh, with a secondary wire running into the gaps left behind for a, a solid perfect fusing. Now what this does is it creates pockets uh, within the coil itself. So instead of having your wrap wires all butted up against each other, creating a, a semi-solid surface, uh, you, you've got these little divots that uh, will hold the juice, allow for better wicking and better juice management, um, and allow the juice to be vaporized off at different rates. So what's this do? One, it increases vapor production. Two, it immensely increases flavor production. So let's go ahead and pop on over to the build table and we'll check out the tools that we're going to need for today's build. So first and foremost, we're definitely going to need wire. For our core wire, we'll be using Kidney Puncher Canthal 26 gauge. For our wrap wire, we'll be using Kidney Puncher Nichrome 80 36 gauge. Now I've had a lot of people question as to why I choose to use Canthal cores with Nichrome 80. One, it lowers the ohm level a little bit to my suiting. Uh, two, I also find a, uh, a better taste with the, uh, with the combination of those two wires. And uh, third, and semi-most important, is the Nichrome helps offset the, uh, the speed ramp, or you know, the heating ramp time of the, uh, of the Canthal cores. Now, you'll also definitely need a drill. I mean, you could do this by hand, but let's be realistic, you don't want to. You're also going to need cotton for your wicking and scissors. You're going to need something to wrap your, your wire around for your coils. Uh, today, I'll be using the Coil Master with a 2.5 millimeter mandrel. You're going to need something to cut your wire, uh, so some snips will come in handy. Uh, a pair of pliers to help straighten your wire. Ceramic tweezers, while not required, they do help out with the, uh, with the bedding in process on the finished coils. You're going to need your RDA. Today, we'll be building on the .com V1 uh, with an accurate ohm meter and you're going to need a clip or a uh, top cap of a RDA, but uh, if you're going to use the clip, you're going to need something to, uh, to act as a, as a counterweight on it. I just happen to have this magnet that, uh, that works perfect for the counterweight. So let's go ahead and pop on over to Steam Engine, and uh, we'll see exactly what we're going to need to get this build started. So if you haven't seen my Steam Engine tutorial, uh, go ahead and check that out. Uh, if not, I mean, we're going to definitely walk through it here. Uh, if you've seen the, the tutorial, by all means, go in there and play with it. But, uh, but we'll pop into the wire wizard and see how to put this wire together. So in the wire wizard, under the wire builder section, uh, we have the option of making a staggered clapped. So we're going to pick that option. And for our cores, it's saying that we're going to need two of them. Well, uh, this automatically tells us that it, if we choose a single wire, it's automatically going to assume that we're doubling that wire up. So being that we're using Canthal for our core wire, we're going to go ahead and leave the Canthal the same, but we're using 26 gauge. So we're going to drop this uh, gauge count down to 26 gauge. If you're using the metric system for your wire, you can definitely change that uh, in, in its place. Now for our wrap wires, your first one is what you're going to wrap around each core. Now, since we're using the same wire for both the uh, individual core wrap and the fusing wire, it really doesn't make a difference here. But if you're using uh, a, a mixture of wires, like say you're using stainless steel for each core, and then you're fusing it with say Nichrome 80, that's where something like this would come in handy. So since we're using Nichrome 80 on both of them, we're going to change those to Nichrome 80 and change our gauge count to 36 gauge. And we're going to do the same with the secondary wrap. Now, scrolling back to the top, our inner diameter, as I mentioned, is going to be a 2.5 millimeter. And I'm going to be using six wraps today. Now, six wraps, uh, having done this before, will get us dual coil around a 0.2 to a 0.22. And uh, we can see that uh, the expected resistance per coil is a 0.422, which would 
theoretically put us at a 0.21. There's always going to be some slight variations on that, though. So a 0.21 is about where Steam Engine says that we should be. So let's go ahead and get the, the build table cleared, and, uh, and we'll get started on the build itself. Okay, so now I've had some people that have asked how I stand my spool up for my wrap wire. So let me go ahead and show you that before we actually get done, you know, get started on the actual build itself. Basically, what I do is I take uh, two heavy objects. In this case, I use two mods, that I, and I stand them up right with something semi-heavy right in front of it. Okay, and then all I do is I put my wrap wire spool right between them with the wire feeding from underneath. So when it spools, it's going to try to run into the object that's right in front of it, uh, which holds it in place and allows it to uh, spin freely. So I hope that clears up uh, the confusion on when I talk about my uh, spool being off camera behind uh, what exactly is taking place back there. So let me get it back in place. Now, for our core wire, as I mentioned, we're using 26 gauge. So we're going to need two cores of 26 gauge. Uh, some people will tell you just to cut off one core and, uh, and just fold it in half after we're done uh, with the uh, staggering. I prefer to work with two individual cores. Uh, it just allows for a more consistent uh, spacing on the wire itself when we get to the fusing portion. So I've cut off uh, about 14 inches here, which will be more than enough for what we need. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this core wire out of the way. And then like normal, we're just gonna go ahead and straighten our cores up by sticking one end in the chuck of the drill, holding the other end with a pair of pliers, make sure that that's nice and tight. Pull the wire taut, give it a couple spins, and then before you let go with your pliers, make sure that you run your fingers all the way down to the pliers before letting go of the pliers, and you'll feel the recoil in your fingertips uh, to let you know that uh, that it's gone. Uh, because if you do that, if you let go of the pliers before your fingers get down there and control that uh, tension release, you'll get some waving here at the very end, and, and you don't want to mess with that. So we're going to repeat that with the second core. Make sure to get that in there nice and tight. And again, pulling down. Run our fingers down to the pliers, let go and release the tension. And there we go. Now, swivels do come in almost mandatorily uh, necessary here. Uh, I didn't cover those in the intro, but they do uh, make things much, much easier. So I'm going through and I'm just bending some loops in the end of my core wires uh, to hook onto those swivels. And I'm going to do that with both of them. And then once I've got the uh, hoops wrapped up, I'm going to measure out these wires to make sure that they're relatively close in length with each other. So we've got that in there, just like that. And then all we're going to do is just line these up together, if I can keep a hold of them. There we go. And just snip off the excess of the longer one. Make sure you throw any wire away uh, right away. That way uh, it doesn't fall off and uh, you end up stepping on it uh, and finding it with your foot later on because that's that's definitely not a good thing. So I'm just gonna hook this up to the swivel. Now, I'm going to be uh, pausing the uh, the camera every so often uh, and zooming it in and getting it focused so you guys can get close-ups. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and, uh, so you guys can see firsthand what's going on behind the scenes here. Uh, and I'm gonna pause it and rearrange the camera. Okay, so I've got it zoomed in here. We're, we're looking at the chuck of the drill. Right here is my core wire. Now, before we actually get started, I need to cut off about four inches worth of wrap wire, and you'll see why here in just a moment. So we're going to go ahead and put that aside for right now, but we're going to take the remaining wrap wire, and we're just going to wrap it uh, a couple times around the very end of the wire just to give the, uh, the chuck of the drill something to grab onto. 
it doesn't have to be fancy you know it doesn't have to be a certain way just get it on there and uh, snip off any excess this is just so the drill can grab onto that uh, onto that wrap wire and we're going to shove that in the chuck tighten it down nice and tight let's see if i can get this where you guys can see it better there we go and we're just going to give it a couple spins just to get a couple wraps on there. Now, I know that doesn't show up the best, but I've got about four or five wraps on here. I'm gonna go ahead and give it one more. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to tighten up the slack in the wrap wire. There you go. Now you can see those wraps a little bit better. Now, that segment that we cut off just a few moments ago, I'm going to put it into that gap right behind where the uh, wrap wire is coming on. And I'm going to throw it into the spacing, just wrapping it around into the spacing uh, a few wraps behind. I generally do three wraps behind. So I've got it perfectly in the spacing and I'm just going to take those tails of that, uh, of that extra wire and I'm just going to hold them in place with this clip and this weight. And that's going to keep those uh, perfectly aligned. And if we push this all the way back to the check of the drill and we start spinning, it's going to leave behind a perfectly spaced wire. Now, after we get done with this wire, I will get you guys a macro shot of what to look for. Now, for your wrap wire, you're definitely going to want to have this as close to a 90 degree, maybe just a hair back uh, from 90 degrees, but you're, wanting, you're going to want to have this as close to 90 degrees as possible to keep that wrap wire nice and even. We're just going to go all the way down. Let me pull this back out. And set the autofocus. There we go. And I'm going to run this all the way down. I'm going to go ahead and fast forward through this so you guys don't have to worry about seeing all this. Okay, so we're getting fairly close to the end here. You don't want to go all the way to the very end, but you want to give yourself about an inch or so, maybe just a bit under an inch, uh, before you uh, before you cut your line, uh, because uh, you, this is going to recoil a little bit, and then when we start to go fusing back in, uh, it's definitely going to uh, space itself back off. So we want to give it enough room to back itself out without getting bunched up. So we're going to cut it off right there, and of course it spring back to right here where right there is our wrap wire. So we're going to go ahead and, uh, and unwrap that. All we're gonna do is just remove this and just gently unwrap this tail that we acted as a spacer. Now, if you're using, uh, or if you're using swivels, uh, I definitely recommend tightening up your loop if it's come uh, a bit uh, undone as mine has. Uh, you're definitely going to want to tighten that up for the next round whenever you go back to, uh, to fuse them both together. So all I'm doing is I'm just closing that loop back up uh, to get it prepped up for, for the fusing. And we're just going to repeat that process with the, uh, with the second core. Okay, so what you're seeing here is uh, the spacing that's left behind uh, after this process. Now I'm going to see if I can get my tweezers in here. There we go. You can see that uh, that we've still got some movement between the cores, uh, between the core and the wrap wire. So be gentle when handling this because you don't want to throw that spacing off too much. But our fusing wire is going to go right in the middle of that uh, of those gaps right in there uh, and, and connect these two wires together. So uh, let me pop back out to the uh, to the overhead cam, and uh, and I'll try to get you some good shots of, of the fusing in action. Okay, so with both of our cores together, we're going to pull tight, make sure that there's no slack in the line in either one of the cores, and we're just going to take our wrap wire. Oops, and I just had one of the cores fall completely off the swivel, so I'm going to have to bounce that back out. And that's what I was saying, why, that uh, you need to make sure that you tighten up the uh, 
the hoops in your cores uh, to make sure that they don't come off whenever you go to, uh, to fuse them together. But we're just going to wrap this wire nice and tightly around these two cores. Cut off that little bit of excess right there. And we're going to stick these in the check of the drill. Now your beginning is more than likely not going to be perfect. Uh, it's, it's not the first couple wraps that you need to worry about because spacing's probably gotten off a little bit. Uh, but you need to uh, make sure that you're getting it nice and tight from there on out. And it's just going to fall into place on those cores. Now I'm going to try to figure out, let me see if I can get my macro camera uh, close enough with me still able to work to where you guys can see this wrap in action. Okay, so we're right here in the grooves, and as long as you keep that wrap wire at about a 90 degree angle, it will fill itself in to those grooves. And you just keep going all the way down. Let me see if I can get that to uh, show up a bit better on the camera by lowering that down just a little bit. Again, just 90 degrees right into those grooves. And once you get into the hang of it, you can go as fast as your drill will allow. Okay, now once you get this finished, I'm going to zoom back all the way out and throw this onto manual focus, I mean autofocus. Now you may see that there's some twisting action right through here, some twisting down here at the very end. It's simple enough to fix, just pull it out. Uh, most of it will, will automatically uh, straighten out when you go to wrap it. But if there's a little bit too much, you can always take some toothless pliers and just, with your drill, just spin it out and knock it out that way. And there she goes. So let's go ahead and get to the close-up and uh, we'll wrap this up and uh, get it mounted. Okay, so we've got this, it's, like I said, it's gonna go on the .com V1, uh, which is a triple post system. Uh, we'll be using the Coilmaster 2.5 millimeter mandrel, uh, and it's gonna be mounted on my wife's uh, iStick 100 watt. So we said that we were gonna do six wraps that should come out to dual coil about a 0.21 after it's burned in. So we're gonna go ahead and throw it into the loops of the Coilmaster. This time we're going to go ahead and use the cap just for simplicity's sake. One, two, three, four, five. Oops, it's twisting just a little bit. So we're going to take our nylon pliers and just straighten out that core wire a little bit. Okay, so that's five. And one more makes six. Wrap it a little bit extra so we can crook out the leg of that coil to get it nice and centered. I'm gonna pre-trim this leg a little bit. And we're gonna repeat that process for the second coil. Again, just putting it through and trapping it with our thumb. Put it in the top cap on and put just spinning it. Two, three, four, five, and six. Crook that leg again and pre-trim the leg. And of course, you'll just want to mount this however you normally mount in your particular RDA. Uh, I always tighten down the, uh, especially on a three post, you have to tighten down the, uh, the negative lead first. You want to leave that, uh, that positive lead untightened until uh, you have both coils inserted. Just trim that leg up. Mount that second coil in. that leg and using the mandrel from our quell master just going to unscrew that and I'm going to center up these coils real quick before I tighten down that positive post here we 
go. And then while holding those in place, I'm just going to tighten that positive post down and then I'll readjust the coils if they come off just a little bit, which they did. Just straighten those back out. Pull them away from the post just a little bit. Okay, now remember, uh, anytime you build with a coil master, your coils are going to ohm out a little bit lower than they're going to finish up uh, due to how tight the wraps are. So let's go ahead and turn this on and see what we're clocked in at. Okay, so I swapped out the batteries. Uh, my batteries were low and the reading was off. So I swapped out the batteries and I'm coming in at a 0.14 now. Now, if that's a little bit too low for what your mod will run, just kind of space out the coils with your fingernails just a little bit. And that'll bring up the ohm a little bit. Now, so I'm reading at a 0.153. Now, my wife's uh, e -st or iStick 100 watt has a 0.15 ohm bottom cutoff. So just to be safe, now most mods have a 0.1 cutoff, but uh, that one has a 0.15. But just to be safe, I'm going to go ahead and fire it on, on my Cuddles from Caitlin uh, SX350J uh, V2 mod and just get it balanced out and leveled. So I'm just going to screw it on here. Going to adjust the wattage a little bit just to bring it down. We're just going to slowly burn this in. Remember, we want it glowing from the inside out. And there she goes. Nice and strong from the middle out. And let's see what she finished up at. We expected right around a 0.1 or 0.21. We actually clocked in at a 0.19 uh, as the uh, finishing ohm for this. Uh, like I say, you know, steam engine is a good uh, guide for approximately where you're going to be. So uh, I consider that a success being off by 0.02. So we're going to go ahead and let that cool off. Go ahead and get that on her mod since she'll be the one vaping it. Not going to tighten that down all the way, uh, but we're going to let that cool off. The reason I'm not letting it tighten, or the reason I'm not tightening it down all the way is that way that uh, that coil is nice and cool before I actually lock in the, uh, the ohm level on that particular uh, mod. So in the meanwhile, we're going to go ahead and prep up our cotton, which with a Muji pad uh, for a 2.5 millimeter coil, I always use approximately one quarter of the pad per coil. So those are prepped and we're just going to take off that matted front and back layer on each of the strips. And of course, you know, if you're using something like uh, cotton bacon or anything along those lines, uh, you know, wick as you normally would. So let's see if these are cool. Yep, those are nice and cool now. So we'll go ahead and lock in. And yep, it locked in at a 0.19 on this one as well. So we're good to go. And we're just going to pinch off the tip get it nice and rolled and just as we're pushing it through just give it a little twist action to allow it to go through smoother okay just wiggle it in uh, you want a, just enough resistance to where it's kind of uh, tugging on the coil a little bit but you don't want it so tight that it's actually yanking the coil out of place uh, but you also don't want it to freely move back and forth within the coil. You want it just that sweet spot where it just barely tugs on the uh, on the coil itself. Again, we're just going to take this, give it a little, oops, give it just a little bit of a twisting action as we go through. Brace the coil with our thumbnail and just set it in. As far as how long to leave your tails go, that all depends on the RDA that you're using. 
Uh, with the dot com, we tend to leave the tails a little bit longer because it's got a fairly deep juice well to it. So there we go. Pull that just a little bit more. And then use whatever you have at hand, whether it's ceramic tweezers or a little screwdriver, just to fluff out those tails. We're just going to tuck that into the juice well. Just like any other quill, you want to make sure that there's plenty of airflow going up underneath the quill itself. So always check to make sure that you're able to see clear under your quill. Uh, obviously, we can definitely see clear under this one. Uh, same with this one right here, uh, but you definitely want to be able to see under your coil uh, to make sure that you've got adequate airflow. So we're just going to grab the juice that she's using and we're going to soak up the coil first and foremost. Let that start working its way into the actual center of the coil. Meanwhile, we're going to saturate, but not overly drown the cotton tails. Remember, the more juice that you have on your coil and in, in your cotton, the more likely it is to spit back. So be conservative with, uh, with the amount of juice that you put on your coils. And then we're just going to pulse it just a little bit. Add a little bit more to it. And all this is doing is just slowly breaking in the cotton in the center of that quill to where it doesn't scorch. Okay, there we go. Now let me get you guys a macro shot of what we've got going on here. And uh, we'll be ready to take it up to the face cam and, uh, and see how she vapes. Okay, so here we are up close. Let me go ahead and see if I can keep this in focus without shaking it all over the place while we pulse it. And of course, I'm moving it all over. I'm getting y'all seasick. But yeah, so that's what the finished product looks like. I'll zoom in a little bit more for you guys so you can get a nice close view. And of course, uh, the little indentations that you're seeing on the right side of each coil, that's uh, from that gnarled edge uh, of the screw that uh, is on the coil master itself uh, that's indenting those uh, as it wraps the coil. But uh, yeah, so you can see it's nice and tight together. You've got that staggered fusing going on. Uh, plenty of little juice pockets in those uh, little indentations between the full wraps. Uh, so yeah, let's go ahead and take it up to the face cam and finish this video off and I'll tell y'all tell y'all what I think of it. Okay, so we've got it at uh, 67 watts because that's what my wife normally vapes hers at. So I'm just going to leave it there. 0.19, clocking in at, at 3.5 volts. Quick ramp up time, lots of vapor. While the flavor is not particularly in my flavor profile, I know what it's supposed to taste like. It's got all the highlights and the undertones that are supposed to be there. Uh, yeah, this is her all-day coil. You know, this is, she she enjoys this. When I'm in a hurry and I don't feel like making a frame staple coil or an alien coil, this is what I'll do. I'll throw together a staggered fuse Clapton, mount it up, and uh, and and go. Um, so yeah, I mean, if you have any questions or comments, leave them down below. I'll I'll get to them as soon as I can. Uh, if you like the video, you know, definitely give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Uh, I try to put out new videos every Monday at 2 p.m. Eastern Time, so make sure that you check back for the next in the series. Remember, it's not the cigarettes that you smoke, but rather the ones you don't smoke that count. I don't care if you're vaping a .1 or a 10-ohm coil, as long as you're doing it safely. If it satisfies you, that's all that matters, because at the end of the day, it's your vaping journey. You're going to be the one that needs to enjoy it. So with that being said, I'm going to cut on out of here. Enjoy your journey, but do it safely.